it seems like any hiccup spooks this market big time. In fact, you know, if you take a look at the, the uh, spike in searches for stock market crash over the last 10 years or so, it's crazy. Courtney, of course, markets do pull back. Heck, they even crash from time to time. So what do you tell people, what are you telling investors about the realities of the market? And, and, and do they urge you, uh, you know, to sort of guess at the tops and, and bail out when to bail out? You know, I get that a lot from people. Hey, is this the top? Should I sell? I get that all the time. And Charles, I unfortunately don't have a crystal ball either, so I can never unfortunately answer those questions quite particularly. Um, but I really just try to urge people to remember is ups and downs are very normal when it comes to the stock markets, but timing it can be a really dangerous game. So you just want to make sure that you have that cash or some sort of safety available to take advantage of opportunities. Last year was a great example. In March and April, everyone was really nervous. I had people genuinely ask me, can the markets go to zero? We were making sure we were actually taking cash and buying back in, even those scary times, and it really put your best foot forward. Right. You just need to think, markets have never gone down and stayed down forever. So just take a, take a look at those as opportunities and make sure you're well positioned. So, Courtney, I got to give you props because late last year, you you started advising, hey, you know what, let's, let's, let's move away from over-concentration in these mega growth, mega cap names. Uh, uh, so this weakness, I guess you were anticipating it, but what do you make now? Because the irony is that the people moved into other names that were moving just as fast as a typical tech stock, although they don't have the growth of a typ typical tech stock. Yeah, I mean, our, our and I appreciate the, the kudos, Charles. Um, but yeah, I mean, our, our thesis stays the same. We're, we do, do still own our mega caps, but we've been making sure that we've been taking profits from those things because they've been doing so well. And we're making sure that we're adding to small over our large companies, our value over our growth, and even adding to international. Because if you look at the past 14 recessions, each time, it's value and small caps that have led that. And so you just want to make sure that you are being proactive and making sure you're taking advantage because each dip is going to be a little bit different, but long-term you want to make sure that you're taking those trends.